Good morning, sir. Good morning, how are you? I'm very fine, thank you, sir. How was your night, sir? My night? My night was fine. Ah, sir, you came very early today. hope there's no problem. Oh, I have so many of unfinished work, so I had to come early. Okay, now. Um, yeah. your Mrs. Watts again, please. Uh, Mrs. Jennifer, sir. I have noticed something very spectacular about you. You're always giving thanks to God. Yeah. You're always praising God. You're always singing. And sometimes I wonder why you do this. You don't live life below an average human. You are nothing but a cleaner. Why do you always thank God? It's, it's ludicrous. <laughs> sir, you are very funny, sir. Sir, you know it is written in the Bible that in every situation you find yourself, you should give thanks. Oh, it is written yes, sir. in the book of First Thessalonians 5, 18. Uh -uh. Give thanks to God in all circumstances, for this is the will of God. For us through Jesus Christ. Sir, <laughs> how come you know the Bible so well, but you still don't believe in Christ? My friend, I was a very devoted Christian before now. I was always going to church. I never missed any service, not even one. In fact, I was even the superintendent of the Sunday school unit. But eventually I got to know that God does not really care about us. I was living life as a mediocre. I wasn't really very rich. I was just there. I needed more. My friend, to further buttress my point, it is explicitly stated in your Bible, in the book of Psalm 24 verse 1. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and everything that dwells therein. It is also written in the Bible in the book of Psalm 50 verse 10. Every animal in the forest belongs to God and so do cattle upon a thousand hill belong to God. God is this rich. He's, 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 he's a God of abundance. Why is it that most of his children are not living in abundance? This I constantly ask myself. Why is it like that? God withholds the most, the most precious gifts in this life from his very own children look at your life for example you are just there there is nothing very fascinating about you you make your um, probably doing Christmas, doing Easter uh, some of them you do on credit you could not even afford the poorest private school your children they are all going to public schools Assuming that is not enough, my friend. Everything you have, everything in your generation is not as expensive as my wristwatch. Why would I serve the kind of God you serve? Look at me for, for crying out loud. <laughs> I have everything you can ever dream of. I am even your source of livelihood. Without me, <laughs> sorry, I think you'll be dead. <laughs> uh, Sir, with all due respect, with all due respect, sir, the God I serve, I mean, my own God is a God of time and season. And with him, there is nothing that is not possible. I know my promotion will definitely come. I have the assurance. Yeah, your promotion will come. Your God is a God of time and season. Have you forgotten that your husband ran away from you because of poverty? Oh, your God is a God of promotion. I think that is written in the book of Psalm 75, verse 6 and 7. Promotion neither comes from the east, nor the west, nor the south. But God the judge, he put it down one and set it up another. Now ask yourself, do you know how many times I've been promoted just this year? Even though I'm not a fan of your God. Let me tell you something. Promotion does not just come by itself. You work out for it. Look at me. I am very hardworking. Without your God, I am doing just fine. If I look at my life without your God, everything is turning on you. You understand? Everything is good, my friend. I'm not saying you should not uh, thank your God, but I do not believe with the kind of life you are living, you, there is anything you should thank God for. 
you are in fact you are you are you are living i think i have a meeting my friend just think of your life and think whether you should thank god or not um please clean my office very well and uh, i don't want to perceive this tension i come back Sister Jennifer, what is the matter? Why are you crying? Uh -uh. This is not the Jennifer I used to know. The Jennifer I know, no matter what happens to her, she always finds a reason to give thanks to God. She always sings praises to God. I don't want to hear that word again. See, I don't want to hear that word again. I am tired. Let me tell you, I am sick and tired of praising God. I am sick and tired of pretending as if all is well, but that all is nowhere. You all know in this office that without a guy I cannot do anything. You know that without a guy I cannot even pay my children's movies. And this God that I serve, this God that I serve, that I sing praises to every time, is there looking at me doing nothing. And you said I should just, just give me one minute. Just give me, just give me two minutes where I should thank God. Look at our guy. Our guy is not a Christian. According to him, he said everything is done on your own for him. And me, look at me. And me, what more, more position? Look at this clothes that I've been putting on for the past five months. And you are in this office. And you are still telling me to praise God. <laughs> Fear God. What, what you are saying, whenever I see your guy, I always admire him. He's always shining. He wears golden wristwatch, designer suits, and he has cars, houses, and landed properties. And he's not even a Christian. Exactly. That is what I'm trying to tell that you now. now. That is what I'm saying. He's not no, a Christian. This is what I want to say. You are here crying because your boss has gotten for himself cars and houses, landed property, forgetting that without salvation, he does not, he's not even entitled to the smallest room in heaven. And you are crying. When the Bible says that what shall it profit a man if he should gain the whole world? And lose his own soul. Mark chapter 8, verse 36. You are here crying. I'm not saying that to be rich is a sin or is bad. In fact, it is the will of God for we as his children to prosper. But my sister, look at you here crying. You've forgotten what the Bible says. You've forgotten that you are bought with a price. You've forgotten that Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary for you. You've forgotten the gift of salvation which God has given to you. That is the most expensive gift on earth which any man would ever desire to have. And you are here crying because, because of what your boss have and, not, uh, and what you don't have. You are even having the, the, the worth of a Gentile. Can't you see Marole Mefeni, my friend? He is rich and he's a Christian. You didn't even have him. You are here crying for the worth of a sinner. Oh, You are crying. You've forgotten that the Bible told us in the book of Colossians chapter 1 verse 27 that Christ in us is the hope of glory. We have this hope in him that on that day we shall see him face to face. We have the hope in him that on that day God will wipe away all tears from our eyes. He says there will be no more sorrow, no more death, no more pain. There will be no more, no more crying. And here you are, you are crying. You've forgotten that on that day we will walk upon the streets of gold. We will be like him. We shall wear the crown of righteousness. And you are crying. Oh, no wonder the Bible says that if all the hope we have on earth is just, is, 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 is Christ is the only hope we have on earth, we, we are all men most miserable. You are here crying. Oh, my brothers, my sister, I want to say something this morning. The poorest Christian on earth is as wealthy as our father Abraham. And the richest sinner you can ever think of is as poor as the foolish fool in the Bible who died and went to hell and was begging for the drop of water from the tomb of Abraham. Don't be deceived, my sister. Don't let the devil lure you into what what will fade away in just a few minutes how many years is he going to enjoy all this thing that he has if he fails to repent and he dies he's going to hell but you you have a glorious hope i want to say something before i leave when the devil try to trick you 
to tell you that you have nothing to rejoice for. When he wants want to make you see that God has done nothing for you, rebuke the devil and tell him that you have the gift of salvation. And that is all that matters. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and every other thing shall be added unto you. You don't go to the market to buy jara. The words they are jara, the most important thing is the salvation of your soul. If you are praising God this morning, I want you to have this in mind. I am worshiping God this morning because he has given me salvation. And on that day, I will see him. Tell the devil, whenever I come to you, that I am rejoicing. My name has been written. I am rejoicing that I am born again. I am rejoicing. My name has been written. I am rejoicing.